Now, I think there are few things more fun and more thrilling than trying to solve things that cannot be explained. That's why I've gathered a list of the world's most puzzling unsolved mysteries. Sit tight. Well, very few people can say they have climbed to the top of the world. But to say they were the first ones to reach it is a whole different story. Mount Everest is the highest point on the planet, standing at a staggering 29,000 feet tall. The mountain is also known to be cruel to those who try to climb it, with winds up to 105 miles per hour and temperatures below minus 22 degrees. It's difficult to climb it even with all the technology available today, but imagine doing it 70 or even 100 years ago. The first duo to have gone down in the history books for reaching Everest's summit were Englishman Sir Edmund Hillary and his Nepalese Sherpa Tenzing Norgay back in 1953. However, there is a tale of another team that could have reached it first almost 30 years earlier. It was the year 1924. Mount Everest had been shrouded in mist and clouds for most of the day. But around lunchtime, the sky cleared. George Mallory and Andrew Irvine were on the slopes of the mountain that day, making a bid toward its summit. Irvine was just 22 at the time and a relatively inexperienced mountaineer. But he was joined by Mallory, who was one of the best. You may not have heard of Mallory's name before, but maybe you know one of his famous quotes. When asked why he wanted to climb Mount Everest, he simply answered, because it's there. It was Mallory's second attempt to reach the summit. The pair had prepared themselves well and had ultra-modern mountaineering equipment, even if state-of-the-art back in 1924 was quite primitive by our standards today. But something happened on the duo's last stretch toward the summit, and they never made it back to the base camp. So this is still one of the greatest mysteries of the mountaineering community to date. Did Mallory and Irvine reach the top of Everest? Were they the first ones to summit the world's highest mountain? In 1999, a climbing crew set out to go back over Mallory and Irvine's steps in the hopes of figuring out whether they reached the summit back in 1924. The crew came back with thrilling news. They found George Mallory himself, well preserved under inches of snow. This discovery shone new light on the mystery. Mallory's leg was broken, suggested that he might have fallen during his summit attempt. But mountaineers still wonder, did this accident happen on the way down from Everett's summit? Or did it happen while the duo was still climbing up? The expedition discovered some evidence that Mallory might have made it all the way to the top of the world. It was well known that Mallory kept a picture of his wife with him throughout the trip. He wanted to leave it at the top of Everest if he made it to the summit. And while the members of the team noticed a pocket knife, an altimeter, and several handwritten notes, there was no picture. Of course, this doesn't prove anything, but it may suggest that the man reached the peak and left his wife's picture up there. Or the picture could have fallen out of his pocket. For now, this will remain a mystery. Now, have you ever heard of Steve Fawcett, the first man to complete the first round-the-world trip in a hot air balloon? Fawcett became a legendary, well-respected, and record-setting pilot, which is why his disappearance left many unanswered questions. On September 3, 2007, Fawcett was in the Sierra Nevada mountains when he decided to take his single-engine plane out for a spin. It was a simple, leisurely day flight in his Super Decathlon aircraft. However, Hours went by without Fawcett returning. A search-and-rescue team set out for the mountains to try and find it, but they came back empty-handed. Fawcett was believed missing. A search for him went on for months, but turned up nothing. A year later, a hiker was exploring the steep hills of Mammoth Lakes in California. He came across some ID cards and quickly notified the local authorities. After a thorough search, the police came across some debris and identified it as what was left of Steve Fawcett's two-seater airplane. The aviation community was shaken by this information, wondering what type of misfortune could have taken down one of the world's most experienced pilots. As far as they knew, the route Fawcett had taken was an easy one, which puzzled them even more. There are some speculations of what could have happened. Researchers recreated the flight conditions on Fawcett's route. That day, visibility was normal, but downdraft winds could have disoriented the pilot, making him lose control of the plane. 
But still, could this be enough to take down the record-breaking pilot? Our next mystery lies somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. The area hosts what is known today as Mexico's missing islands. Bermeja was known to be a tiny uninhabited island. It appeared on many maps in the 16th and 17th centuries and was a hotspot for Spanish explorers. Its location varied slightly from map to map, and occasionally its name was written as Vermilla, but its existence seemed certain enough. But then, the island stopped being depicted on maps altogether. Its last appearance dates to 1921, and then poof! This situation raised many questions. Did the island sink? Was it destroyed? Are people simply looking for it in the wrong place? Three official expeditions took place in 2009 to find the island. They used high-end technologies scouring the ocean and seabed. Yet Bermia was nowhere to be found. One can't help but wonder if the island existed at all. After all, it is known that the 16th and 17th century maps were often published with inaccuracies to fool and confuse enemies and unwanted voyagers. All the way up in northern Canada, there's an astounding lake known as Lake Anjakuni. On a November day in 1930, a Canadian explorer named Joe LaBelle was looking for a place to warm up and spend the night. He decided to visit an Inuit village located on the rocky shores of the Lake Anjakuni. He had visited this area before, and according to his story, there were lots of tents, huts, and friendly locals in the area. After arriving at the village, he realized it was empty. There were no people or dogs, not a single sign of life in the village. Abel was confused and assumed that the entire village of about 30 men, women, and children had fled and abandoned their huts. It's difficult to imagine what could make all these people leave the safety of their homes. There were no signs of struggle and no sign that something had happened in the area. The mysterious disappearance has brought up many theories, but even today, there's no explanation for this event. Underwater worlds are unexplored and hide many mysteries. The truth is, we know more about the moon than about our oceans. Perhaps giant sea creatures might be living in their depths. One of them could be the USS Stein monster. No one knows where the event took place, but it reportedly happened in deep waters. The crew of the USS Stein was traveling smoothly when they noticed that the ship started to experience technical problems. It eventually led to the failure of the sonar, but nobody got hurt. When the ship arrived home, it was dry docked and examined immediately. It was said that whatever had caused the damage was very big. The hull of the ship had many cuts and marks that looked like they had been left by a squid suction cups. The claws were larger than anything the engineers had seen before. They guessed that the creature might have measured up to 150 feet in length. Although this encounter sounds unbelievable, there have been others eerily like this one. In 2006, a Japanese research team set out to investigate the existence of giant squids. There, they used a large bait and suspended it to keep it dangling from the bottom of the ship. The experiment was a success. A large 24-foot-long squid came close to the bait and was filmed. To this day, the largest documented squid is over 40 feet long. But who knows what types of creatures inhabit our dark ocean depths? Okay, was that last sentence scary enough? Need another take? We're good? Okay. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.